Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, I'm going to be auditing the Google Ads account and e-commerce store of one of my subscribers. This is gonna be great for you out there if you're looking to improve your own ads, your own website, and you wanna hear the strategies that I would recommend as an e-commerce expert working with dozens of different stores. A bit about me, I run an e-commerce marketing agency. I've helped dozens of different stores scale up and grow with their paid marketing, helping them with their websites, and now I have this YouTube channel where I help a lot of people with all these strategies too. In this video, let's go through their website here, then I'm gonna go through the Google Ads account. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that you can take for your own e-commerce store. I wanna make this insanely helpful for you guys out there, so let's get into it. So first things first, I wanna check out the product page. So uh, Ben here, he actually said to me that he's gone through my product page mastery course, which is a free course that's on my website. I made it to help you guys out there improve the conversion rates of your stores, particularly the product pages like this one here. He's gone through and he's actually made a lot of the, the changes that I recommend in that course. And he, he actually already told me that he's tripled his conversion rate for this page, which is fantastic. But I think there's still more that could be done. So the page here, you know, it's great because you've got, you're selling confetti can cannons. It's got these uh, reviews here, which is really, really good. Um, it's all looking good. And you know, over here, you've got the, the product image. It's nice and big. I think it's looking good already. You've got these um, big benefits, the icons down here, which is a good, good thing to do. Um, the, the top bullet points here. I love that he's got the, the gifts, gifts, whatever you want to call it, the gifts along here, uh, which show the product being used. I think that's fantastic how it's actually used and some examples of what it might look like. I think it's really, really good so far. This is much better than most product descriptions. A lot of people will just have the, the product name and like bullet points and that's all they'll have and they'll wonder why they're not selling any products. We're really, you know, going to this level, almost creating your page, almost like a landing page of sorts, really thinking about what those customers or the potential customers are looking to find when they go to this page. What questions do they have? What are they looking to use it for? So our cannons are perfect for birthdays, graduations, anniversaries, etc. Um, satisfaction guarantee, which is good. They've got the reviews down here with the UGC, user generated content. Great, great stuff here. Looks really, really awesome. And they've got a frequently asked questions. It's looking really good. So no wonder he tripled his conversion rate. I think that's fantastic. I still think there's a lot that could be done here. There's a lot of wasted space here on the left. So it's all squashed to the right which is you know, not the best. I wanna see what it looks like on mobile. I haven't checked that out yet. Let's see what it looks like on mobile. Okay, maybe it's squashed up, but let's refresh just to make sure it's good. Cool, loads up. Okay, that's what it looks like. You got the title down there, not too bad. Okay, these are kind of squashed up, but that's just the, the review software potentially, but it would be nice if they were one after the other, but that's not a big deal and these should work. Awesome, that looks good. I think largely overall, as I look at this website, a big thing is that big space that's there that's missing. It'd be great if you could use a theme or code it in so you actually do make use of this space so it's not like kind of squashed on the right-hand side for desktop. Uh, but I think what would be even better is really, and I'm gonna get into this for the rest of the site as well, it's a really good start. A big thing that's underneath this whole site is really thinking about who is going to use this product and what cases they're going to use it in. This product here has the potential to be a very content rich product because of course people buy these party poppers, these confetti cannons to use at their special events but I see so many of them used in photos on Instagram, Facebook, social media. People love to use these to give, give their photos that buzz, that extra spark as they announce the gender of their baby or if they, you know, while they take the, the wedding photo or whatever it is. But I see on this, this page here, I've got this random, it's a bit generic party photo. There's a few, so you know, this is, these are examples of UGC that people are doing exactly that. I would love to see these right near the top. You know, what you wanna do is when someone goes to this page, they're thinking with an event in mind. They're not just buying it to hope to use for a random event. They're going, hmm, I've got a wedding coming up and I need these, I want to get some confetti cannons for my wedding when I cut the cake. Well, you wanna make sure that you have that, the photos of people using this product for that same event on this page. That would just really make this amazing in my opinion. Because um, really what I'm doing there is, oh, they've got a video here, let's check this out. It's really, the music's really loud. Um, so it's just using the popper, which is a good like product photo, a video, that's not too bad, but really think, like it's quite general, like really think, what are they using this for? How can you show the people using that product in these specific cases on this page here? And so when I go to the home page, for example, it is quite generic. You know, it's got some wedding, it's got wedding confetti poppers, but there's, I don't see any poppers being used that looks like petals or, or flowers or something like, a, yeah, or, or feathers or something like that. Um, that's just like more of a generic thing. 
if I like you got this one here, okay, there that's much more what I'm looking for. Shop gender reveal, celebrate new beginnings, and it's got like a gender photo there, but it's got pink and blue, so I'm not sure what's going on there because maybe it's just one gender. I don't know. Um, maybe that's just for the photo shoot. What I would do basically is just get a lot of content, people using this exact product in the exact use cases. You know, you can take you can get product videos done when you do the photo shoot for yourself for making those products. But what's even better is when you get that UGC, I saw down here that you do have, I think you had a f Instagram feed. Oh, it's not loading. No, it was right here. Let me reload it. So yeah, so this is what I want to see. Like that, Ben, that is like perfect stuff. And what you want to do is basically people come to the homepage. If they come into the homepage, it says shop your event. I think that that's okay. What would be good is if there were tiles here that said, um, like, you know, get the best confetti calendar for your celebration or your special moment. You know, you're not just, it's not just very generic, like shop your event. Something that's really hitting the emotional aspect of these occasions for these people. Shop your special occasion. And then what you would have is tiles for each of those categories, the occasions, gender reveal, wedding, graduation, birthday, you know, you're going to know what events your customers use much more than I will. That's just off the top of my head. But then you would have an image and even like a slider of people using that product for that type of occasion. They click there, it's gonna to go to the product page or even just the product page. And then it's gonna be all about confetti cannons for birthdays. And even if you have the same product but you list it multiple different times on your site but for different categories, I think you should really think about it from that perspective. Instead of going, I'm trying to sell this product, go, I'm trying to add value, like I'm trying to sell this product to these people and then make it so that when they go to the website, think about, okay, someone that's looking for wedding, confetti cannons for their, confetti cannons for their wedding, how would they view the site? So they would go to the homepage and they would be looking for wedding confetti cannons or they'd be looking for a certain color or style. And that's why those, those photos and even videos are so important to show what it's actually gonna look like because they're trying to understand, okay, is this gonna be a terrible product? Is it gonna look okay? Are there, is there enough confetti coming out? Um, is it gonna look good? in my photo or video. That's like what I think is the underlying need is like, is this going to look awesome? And so that's why you wanted to show all those photos. The next thing I would suggest, you know, for your logo, it's very, very hard to read. It's very, very small. I'm gonna blur it out in this video for the subscribers, but for you, Ben, it's really, really small. It's, it's blurry, I can't read it. So I think it just looks unprofessional. That's just my advice on the logo. So getting back to your website layout, I would have, you know, shop your special occasion or find the perfect confetti cannon for your special moment. That's just some examples of copy that is thought of on the spot, but really it's gotta be targeted towards those people, the emotional aspect of it. Then you could have the category, so they, they click through the tiles to go to those category pages or the product pages. And then below that, you can then have the actual products our most popular products and then have them there so people can see the actual, you know, because here we actually have the box and it looks like that. So they can click through and actually access and they know what they're looking for. So it's kind of like going for, if they're, if they're looking for this shaped popper, the, box, the, the, the pole thing, then they can go for that too. The next thing that I would have under that is basically um, a reviews widget. So you've got that on the product page. So down the bottom here, which is you know, all the UGC from customers, which is amazing. You really want to just get as much of that as possible. Like I said, people are gonna, people often, I'm guessing, have, are looking for this product because they've seen one of their friends or family using their photos and they're like, oh, that looks so cool. I wanna get that too. You really wanna play on that social proof and that almost like social envy. It's a weird way to say it, but it's almost like a status sort of thing they're looking for. So you really wanna show, yes, buying this product is gonna give you that status, that it's gonna give you that experience that you're gonna take amazing photos. So having UGC with reviews here is gonna be awesome. You've got these photos here, it's cool, but this, is, this isn't that nice. You know, it's up in the corner. Um, I think this looks okay, but it kind of looks like it's like, what are they celebrating? I don't know. I guess that's as a gender reveal, but like a lot of, like I would just go for like the extremely extravagant best photos that are taken. I think this looks pretty cool. Like, but that would be the standard. That would be the lowest standard that I would have. But I would want to get it with reviews, which would be even better. And don't, and, and like here you've got reviews, but you know, when you've just got text reviews like that, it's not as believable as having it with the UGC in a widget with the stars, making it look really professional. You can then underneath, have a section that says, how do our customers use our products? Um, or use our, our how do, how, even better, how do our products create special moments with our cannons or color cannons or whatever you want to say? Like, you know, that's what I would do. And then I would embed these sort of photos there, but I would make, I would just embed this one and then find ones that are like this or better. These are okay, but they're, I think they're a bit below average. 
and then I would have that section there. And then below that section, I would then embed the Instagram, which is really, really cool. This is awesome. This should be further up the top. I think that's absolutely awesome. Looks like you have a product video here, which is cool. That would be on the product, uh, the gender reveal collections page. I think it is a bit stock photo-y. Uh, you know, I'm sure you put a lot of time into this. I think it looks good. Um, what would be awesome is if, you know, cause it's clear that this is like an example that they made a show. Of course they made a shoot for this. You know, you guys, you did a shoot. I would recommend, you know, getting, see if you, see if you can get this like a sequence of Instagram videos. They're from Instagram that have people using like pop, 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 just like bang, 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 bang. Just all these different instances of the product being used. That might be hard to get, but it would look so awesome. Especially, it only needs to be 30, 60 seconds long and just like all the different moments. So you're just showing all these real life situations of people using the product. Anyway, I'm spending a lot of time filming this. This is taking a long, you know, going over the, the whole, whole, um, whole brand, but really that's what I would do. My focus would be on really trying to identify why these people come to your site and then selling that moment as a thing rather than just selling the product itself. Anyway, that's enough for the website. That's a lot of stuff for you to go through. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here to really improve the brand, but it's going to take a bit of a, like a bit of strategy and stepping back. If you haven't already, I really recommend you start talking with your customers on chat or even call them up if you can, email them, try and find out all the different situations they use your products and really understand like, can you get the, the photos? Maybe there's some sort of incentive you can provide to see the photos that they took with these cannons. That would just be absolutely awesome. Overall though, I think it's not, it's, you know, you're doing much better than a lot of the competition with your website, but it does need a bit of work. Anyway, let's jump over to the Google Ads account and start the audit of that account. So I'm over in the account now. The first thing that I wanna show you, which is so important and anyone else watching this guys, if you're watching this, do this right now. Okay, so go to your Google Ads account and see these recommendations over here. This is what Google recommends you to optimize your account. Sometimes these are good. Some, sometimes or often they're terrible. Okay, so this one here, this recommendation is, is expand your, your reach with Google search partners. And it says reach additional customers on partner sites. So partner sites, basically what Google is asking here is, hey, you should uh, include a setting in your campaigns to show your ads across all our partner search engines. I believe Yahoo might be one of them. I know Gumtree is, but there's a lot of other websites. Google doesn't publish a list. There are a lot of websites and search engines where your ads are going to show if you enable this option. It's a tiny little option in the settings of your campaign. Google will enable this. Uh, Google re recommends enabling this because of course you're gonna spend more money. I found in my experience that the conversions coming from those partner sites are nowhere near as profitable. They don't have a lot of volume, but you're still gonna be paying for those clicks because those people are over there. Say if you started, um, your ad started showing on Craigslist or eBay. Those people are on there often to buy maybe a secondhand um, item or eBay, you know, you can buy a lot of new stuff there too, but it's a definitely a very different type of person that goes to eBay or especially Craigslist looking for, for some sort of item rather than someone going to, going to Google. So it just means that there's a potential there for a different uh, type of buyer that might have a might not might not purchase from you. And my in my experience auditing dozens, hundreds of accounts, I've seen that there's only been one case where the partner websites outperformed Google, um, and and it was a it, I'd say it was a fluke because they didn't have that many clicks. I think they had like five, ten clicks. I'm not sure, can't remember exactly. And they managed to get a conversion, so it looked amazing. Uh, but I think it was actually a fluke. It just didn't have enough data to prove the significance, the statistical significance of that 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 conversion. Um, it can still be profitable, but especially in an account like this where we're just trying to get it off the ground, I recommend going bare bones and focus on the core strategies that are gonna drive the profit for your store because initially you just wanna get it profitable. That's what you care about at the start, get it profitable, and then from there start finding the opportunities as long as they're also profitable, but maybe less profitable. So what's happening here though is Google provides these recommendations and every single account, if you have not actively turn off auto apply, Google will automatically apply these suggestions after 14 days, which is insane. So raise your budgets, your budget, your ad stop running on your busy days, fix your limited budget can help. Well, that's, it, that, that might be sound like a great recommendation. Hey, your budget ran out, but there's a reason why we have a capped budget, which is it's not profitable yet. It's not profitable. We want to make our campaign profitable before we raise it up to $1,000 a day. There's no point running $1,000 a day on a campaign if it's clearly not profitable, you haven't optimized it yet. And so, you know, you're taking a huge risk by spending too much money that you don't need to spend when you can optimize it on a much smaller basis of 20 to $30, maybe even 50 to $100 per day, depending on your budget, depending on how quickly you want to optimize. 
So you definitely don't want that to auto apply in 14 days. Um, bid more effectively with maximized conversions as an automated bidding strategy, that can work well. We find that you that that some of the, one of the best strategies is to run manual bidding first, get it profitable, get Google all the, the conversion data affordably, cheaply, and then potentially change to an automated bidding strategy, but only once Google has that conversion data. And it only gets that conversion data once you start running some campaigns. And if you, if you go in straight in with an automated bidding strategy, it can take a long time for Google to really optimize when you can just get that data much more profitably at a lower cost per conversion and then later switch it over. That's the logic behind that strategy. Um, and add call outs to your ads, I do agree with that. Make sure you add call out extensions, improve your click through rate, um, add new keywords. Yep, there's definitely opportunity here to add new keywords. So some of those strategies are actually good. That's, you know, I definitely recommend that. But some of them, man, really not good. And you can just leave them there. You don't have to apply them. You can just leave it there. The problem is that if you have this setting in your account, so go to settings, account settings over here, and we're gonna see, where is it? Got tracking, auto tagging, no, 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 no. Ad suggestions, set to automatically apply ad suggestions after 14 days. Man, that's scary. We wanna change it to don't automatically apply ad suggestions. Oh, they're even collecting survey data on this. Man, ah, oh, that's, that's, I wanna retain, yeah, they even know that we wanna retain control because we don't want them to just start applying these suggestions willy-nilly. They're using their AI to try and figure out what suggestions are gonna work, but they don't understand, our, they don't know our profit margin, they don't know our goals, they don't know about our store and what we're trying to do with this account. So, you know, I recommend changing it to that. Ben, when you watch this, I rec really recommend you go in and change this. I'm not gonna change it for you because it's your account. I'm just, I'm just auditing it right now and I'm not gonna go make changes because that's not my job right now. So that's the first thing. The next thing that I really wanna do, which is so important, is to calculate our return on ad spend, basically our break even return on ad spend. This is really, really important. So if you're watching this and you don't know your break even ROAS, return on ad spend, we're gonna calculate it right now. So you're gonna pull up a calculator. So here's, here's my calculator. So you're gonna pull up a calculator, we're gonna put in one divided by, and then you need your net profit margin. Okay, your net profit margin, I have a video on how to calculate this. I'll leave it down in the description, a link to it. Go and check that out for your e-commerce store. I, show, I even provide the, provide the template on how to calculate this margin. Once you have this, you put it in. So his uh, net profit margin is about 40%. So we're gonna put in 40%. And so our break-even ROAS is gonna be 2.5. What does this mean? This means that in order to just break even, which means not lose money, not lose profits, we need to have $2.50 generated in sales for every $1 we spend on ads in Google Ads. And you'll see over here, value, conversion value divided by cost, that is ROAS, that is the ROAS, that's another way of saying it. So we need to make sure that this column is bigger than this. Now, if you look at this right now, I'm sure you can see 0.14 is not bigger than 2.5. So clearly right now, this is not doing so well. Let me just pull out the, uh, make sure we get a better time period just to make sure we get all the data here. So it was actually performing worse before that period, so before the last month, it actually was performing worse. So they've done some optimizations, but still 0.12 is not a good ROAS at all. That's, that's something is really, really, really wrong with the account or the website, if, if that's your ROAS, you're targeting the wrong people um, or your website just isn't converting enough people. I'm guessing on this case, it's a bit of both. I think the, like, the website isn't too bad, those product pages, they look pretty good. So the shopping campaign, here it is. It's got seven conversions so far, but the cost per conversion is quite high, $112. It is getting some conversions, but I think it does need some optimization. And particularly, maybe it might need some more negative keywords. But for you out there watching my channel, that's how you calculate the break-even ROAS. So when you go into your account, you wanna make sure that at least your account is performing above that in the conversion value divided by cost column, 2.5. For you, it's gonna be different. It's based on your profit margin, but that's really, really important. Now, anything above that, that's gonna be a profitable campaign. This is, of course, a weighted, you know, a weighted average across the whole store. Some products might have higher profit margins than others, I'll say that now, but this is just a, a general metric that we can use to benchmark the account, really important. The first, the next thing I'm gonna check is the conversion tracking. So to check conversion, go to tools and settings and go to conversions over here. I've opened it up here just to make it easy because it takes a bit to load. Um, and I can see here that you're using Google Analytics. You've linked that in to track your conversions, which is good. If I go over into the here, and I've got a video on how to track 
conversions with Google Analytics, LinkedIn, and how to install it on your website. Check the description. I'll put some links to some videos down there. Looking here at the, the settings already, this looks good. The main thing I like to check is, is the attribution model. It's at the position base, which is what I recommend. I think you've done a great job there, Ben. That's awesome. That's a big mistake a lot of people mess up, and you've done good. So nice work there. Going back to the campaigns. Now, let me give a quick overview of the campaigns that Ben's running right now. So he's got three search campaigns here. One, two, three. Two of them are live, one of them is paused, and he's got a shopping campaign that he's also paused right now. I'm gonna go through the shopping campaign first, then I'm gonna check out these search campaigns. It looks like he's got an Amazon campaign running. I'm guessing he's running some ads, sending people to his Amazon product pages. I have a video, I believe I have a video on this on my channel, I'll link that down below. I am very careful with Amazon. Um, it's a tough subject because I know Amazon, I've got a lot of friends that, and a lot of clients that are running Amazon stores and they're killing it. They're making a lot of money. The problem occurs when Amazon shuts down your store, uh, they, st they can potentially take your products and sell them as their own. Or I've seen recently this last week, I spoke with someone that was doing a lot of revenue on Amazon, but they were a distributor for a brand and Amazon just went straight to that brand and said, hey, why are we working with this person here? Why don't we cut out that person and just work directly? And um, that's what they did, it was super sneaky. They lost their whole business overnight. And that's why I say it's really important to have a Shopify store just like Ben here, because you can diversify um, that risk. Um, you can be more risk averse and like not leave your eggs all in one basket, which is really important. So I recommend selling on Amazon, but make sure that you also have control of your brand by also having, um, having your Shopify store too. Um, the other problem with, with sending traffic to Amazon is that if you don't send quality traffic to that product page, it can actually tank the, the, the ranking on Amazon uh, because Amazon, similar to how you know, you know organic w works in uh, in Google, Amazon is looking at that product page and looking at um, firstly like the click through rate in the search results, but the bounce rates, um, the the amount of reviews, and how people actually engage with that page. If if suddenly you start sending all this traffic and that traffic is not relevant to Amazon, people aren't expecting to go to Amazon because they're on Google. Then suddenly they might get, they'll get to that page potentially they won't convert and your conversion rate is going to go down and Amazon's going to go oh well potentially this product isn't that good the, the the competitors have better products and so your organic ranking is going to decrease it's a potential thing and I've I've worked with a few different uh, marketers that have had that problem before I don't directly work with sending I don't like to send Google traffic to Amazon um, it can work it, you've got to be careful about it but that's just one risk that can happen I'll say that on the outset let's go into the shopping campaign and take a look. Okay guys, the first thing I like to check, of course, is the settings. So going through, it all looks pretty good to me. Looks fine, bidding is CPC, enhanced conversions, enhanced CPC, sorry, that's good. Um, budget, that's, that's a good budget to have. Um, that doesn't matter because you've only got one campaign. Network, so this is what I was saying before about the recommendations. You got it turned off for Google Search Partners, which is good, it's what I recommend, so keep that off, that's good. And US is good, and location options, you've got that set to regularly in target locations instead of the first one, which is interesting like target locations as well as people in. So that's what I recommend. So nice work there, Ben, on that. And that's all fine. Everything else is fine. I don't, I don't mind that too much. Cool. So let's go into product groups here. So I've got one, one ad group here for the confetti cannons going in. It's had quite a lot of traffic coming through. I've got all these products and they've all got the same beard of $1.10. If you watch any, any of my audits or any of my videos, you'll know that I do not recommend having the same bid for all products. What you should be doing is managing the bids on a product level based on their profitability. Right now, if I, if I um, sort by conversion value divided by cost, there's only four products that have actually got any conversions, only seven conversions out of a total of $786 in spend, which is a lot of spend. I personally probably would have stopped this campaign earlier. More, more importantly, I would have I'd made optimizations before this case right here. So you, you've got some products here that are getting conversions and the conversion rate is 6.3. That's a, that's, you know, the product page is killing it there. Like that's, that's the product page, man. That's that's doing really, really well. The problem is it's too expensive. Like $20, $13 cost per conversion isn't too bad. Depends on what you're selling. Um, but the, the ROAS is less than one, which is, you know, that's definitely not profitable at all. So you've got a good conversion rate for these products here that have actually converted. But you're just spending so much. To me, when I look at that, I go, okay, the bid is way, way too high. The average CPC, what you're bidding. So even here, it's using enhanced CPC to bump that bid up above $1.10. Maybe you had the bid higher previously, but that's really, like, that's really, really high for a product of this amount. When the product is only, I think it was 20 or $30 or even less than that potentially. Yeah, that's a lot per bid, but it depends on the conversion rate, of course. I think honestly, if you just reduce the bids to 50 cents, see if, how much that affects the actual volume of traffic coming through and write it from there. Because potentially this could just be a profitable campaign. All you had to do was just lower the bids and boom, it's suddenly profitable. Say if it was, you reduce the bids to 50 cents for this campaign here, um, 
and your average CPC went down to 60 cents, 50 cents, which is you know half, then uh, your cost per conversion would half and you potentially, your ROAS would maybe double. Uh, well, it would, it would potentially double depending on the average order value and depending on the conversion rate, but it should largely stay the same. That could push that almost to break even. So immediately you have one product that has potential to jump back up to break even. If it's going break even, it depends on your, your marketing strategy, but if you have email marketing, email marketing campaigns in place, like a um, post-purchase sequence, win back flow, um, or even having like your abandoned cart emails uh, and that sort of thing set up, then these customers, even if they're at break even through the shopping campaigns, you could upsell them uh, or sell them later on their next event. Maybe it's for their birthday and you find that out by asking them that in the, in the checkout. And then the next year, you then sell them again and, and do some email marketing campaigns to sell them some more uh, poppers for their birthday. That could be absolutely awesome. Anyway. So the bidding is the biggest thing. That's the absolute huge thing to adjust in this campaign. If you're watching this, guys, this is what I really recommend. When you're starting a campaign, you don't have a lot of budget to start off by managing, managing the, the bids on that, on that product level first, especially here, we've got this potential here. You know, if the conversion rate is that high, that is, that is really, very, very positive, okay? Uh, and that's in my course, I talk about getting these sort of conversion rates that are above 3%. That is, that is awesome. Like that is really, really awesome. Uh, honestly, the, there hasn't been a massive amount of clicks so you would need some more clicks to be statistically significant. Um, but yeah, for those products in particular, that's looking really, really good. Change the bids, that's the first thing. Moving on from that, if we see all these other products here, got all these products, some have been excluded, all these products that, have, that haven't had a conversion yet, honestly, there might be a reason for that. Maybe the, the search queries that are being shown, that, are, that your ads are showing for just aren't as relevant. But honestly, if these are killing it and they're already getting conversions already, if your budget is tight, I would actually exclude, pause all these other products and then just divert all the budget to these, reduce the bid to 50%, 50 cents, and then run it from there. Because here, look at this. So your total spend has been $686. If you add up the spend for just these four products, what's that, $50, $63, it's, it's about $145. And that's got all the conversions out of this whole campaign. So if you just only had these ones here, even if I just add a filter here, so let's just do this. So conversions is greater than zero and apply that. This is gonna show up for us. So you've actually had, oh, it's not showing us the total, unfortunately. <laughs> Why would it do that? Um, yeah, so, but yeah, $145 to get all that revenue. How much revenue is it? So it's it's almost that row as of one, which it still isn't great, but I think adjusting those bids is gonna move it definitely in the right direction, which is really, really positive. So that's what I would do. I would pause all these other ones, focus on these products here, adjust the bids, and then my next thing is to turn to the negative keywords. So go over to negative keywords. You've got some negative keywords here, which is really, really, really good. That's awesome. I would keep uh, looking at the search terms report and filter out any um, keywords that just don't, um, that don't have the buying intent. Um, so you just go through, and a lot of this stuff, it's actually really, really good, but if you're not selling gold confetti poppers, make sure to exclude that, okay? That's really important. So go through wedding exit ideas. Oh, you excluded that, nice work. So I think you're already doing this already, which is really, really good. Balloon arch, unless you're selling a balloon arch, that sounds like a product idea that maybe you could get, um, then yeah, that's what I'd go through and do that. Looks like you're doing that already, which is really, really good. That's only going to enhance the performance of your campaign as you just have more relevant search queries for your products. The next thing I would look at is right here in the, uh, the device uh, bidding adjustments over here. You've got, this is really crazy. So mobile has got, you know, 90% of all the clicks is coming from mobile um, and then computers and tablets are getting much less. A lot of conversions are still coming from, from mobile, but they're quite expensive. So what you could potentially look at doing, you still don't have a lot of clicks. You know, it's, it's a decent amount, but it's not a huge amount. Well, um, but the big thing is conversions, like maybe that's the thing I'd be very hesitant to apply this adjustment, but what you could do, add a negative adjustment for 10 to 20% for mobile phones, just to really try to even that out to try and lower that cost per conversion for the mobile phones. All right, the next thing I would look at is audiences. This isn't a common thing that a lot of people do, but I see that you've added these in already, which is absolutely awesome. But you potentially, you know, you've had two conversions here. Um, the, the cost per conversion is much better than the average for the whole campaign. Potentially, you could add a bidding adjustment here, just a tiny one, maybe 5%. It's really up to you uh, for party supplies, because that is quite a relevant um, subcategory, you know, category of party supplies and planning. That too, that potentially could be. But like I said, there aren't a lot of conversions yet. I would focus on the shopping campaign, getting those bids, bid adjustments, bids in for the, the actual individual products, get some more conversions, and then turn my attention to audiences and the devices, because I see a lot of potential there for making those adjustments, which could push this campaign into profitability. Okay guys, the next thing I'm going to look at is the search campaign here. So I've got 
these three search camp, uh, these three, these three search campaigns here. This one has been paused, but it's Shopify search keywords. It spent three hundred and thirty dollars. Let's take a look at what he's got here. So this camp, this uh, ad group here has been paused. One hundred eighty-two clicks. Didn't have a conversion. That's interesting. Let me um, take a look at the settings first because that is really important. Okay, good. So you've got the search network turned off, display network turned off, which is really good, especially for a new campaign. You want to get it profitable. So you want to not focus on all these other uh, platforms. This is great. So people, you know, regularly in your target locations. I talk about that in a lot of my videos when I do other audits. So I'm not going to go into that right now, but that's what I really recommend for e-commerce stores. And everything else looks good. Enhanced CPC, that's not too bad. Budget, not sure why 151. 51, maybe that was adjusted by Google with their auto changes. Not sure, but I'll, that's okay. Going back into the ad group level. So you've got all these ad groups here. Most of them are, uh, were all paused at the time of pausing this campaign. This one was still going. So it did have a conversion, so I can understand why you still had that going. But this one here has the most traffic. Let me take a look at this. So you've got these search keywords here using the SCAG method, which is, which is good. Um, here, the bids are potentially maybe really high. I, I'd love to see what would happen if you change these down to 50 cents, even 30 cents, depending on how it goes and see if Google will still rank you because, you know, of course, your bid affects your actual ad rank multiplied by the quality score. Um, so it's really important that you still place in the auction and, and especially for a product like this where you, you're not getting the conversions you want, it's not profitable yet, start reducing your bids until potentially you can still stay in the auction, but it's actually profitable because you're going to pay less per conversion with a lower bid as long as you maintain the same conversion rate. So yes, that's fine. You've got, you, you ended up having exact match on, but still wasn't getting conversions. I wonder if, if confetti poppers, maybe they're shopping around. Maybe they saw a competitor that, that, that just looked better to them. It might be a, a problem with the website. Um, for some of those, you know, in the shopping campaigns, some of those products performed really well. Like the conversion rate was quite good. Um, yeah, so maybe it's, maybe it's the keyword, you know, and that's why you've paused it potentially. But what I want to do is check out the ads, really important. So you ran these three different ads and you pause these two potentially because well, the CTR is actually lower for this one. Didn't have any conversion, so I'm not sure why you paused these other ones. Hmm. Really interesting. It is quite a relevant uh, title towards the actual keyword, which is good. But yeah, looking at this, um, you really need to have more than one ad running and testing for your ad groups. If you're watching this, guys, my subscribers, make sure you don't just have one ad. Okay, go into your ad group, and I mean in each ad group. So make sure you go into your ad group and actually double check that you're testing multiple ads and if one ad is a winner, so maybe you did think this was a winner, um, you know, it doesn't look like it was the winner, it looks like this one was actually killing it with, with the actual click-through rate, then pause the other ones, clone the winner, and then run that again and keep running that, keep testing. That's what we do as me and my team, uh, we'll, we'll test multiple ads and uh, keep iterating because then you're making these constant improvements to your actual ad groups, to those ads, and that's when you're gonna get better click-through rates, you're gonna place better in the option uh, auction because you're gonna have you know, better ad relevancy, better quality score, better ad rank, which is just gonna make you more competitive with all your, against all your competitors. The big thing though that I really wanna check for the, this campaign is the actual negative keywords. So let's go into negative keywords over here. So you don't have any negative keywords yet. So this is potentially is a big problem. Um, well, it definitely is a problem because you're not going to be showing, you're going to be showing for all these irrelevant keywords that are triggered by your ads. It's so important, guys, to mine your search terms report to find all the, um, the queries that aren't relevant. So wine bottle confetti popper. Do you sell this product? Is that like a specific sort of product that people are looking for? Etsy confetti poppers. People looking for Etsy there, potentially that's going to have a really low conversion rate. It's only got one click, but still all these little clicks add up. You want to go through here and just like you've done for um, in your in your shopping campaign, add these negative keywords. You can't just leave this search campaign in particular because shopping campaign there is a much more leniency because Google's trying to figure out what your customers are gonna gonna click on um, when they, whatever they search. So you know there's they're looking you know, Google's looking at the feed, it's trying to index the feed and figure out okay what the heck are your products and who do we show them to. Search campaigns it doesn't work like that. You're giving them the keywords. So if you choose bad keywords or keywords that are too broad. Google's gonna start showing them to people and based, of course, based on the, um, the ad record and how people interact with those ads, that's gonna make them show or not show depending on, um, on the ad quality and the actual keyword that you've chosen. But largely, you really need to go through and add those negative keywords. So, so important, guys. So that's what I'd recommend for that search campaign. All right, guys, so that's the search campaign. A few suggestions I have there 
overall the strategy, generally I recommend having a shopping campaign like Banner has here, having a search campaign targeting the brand, which is what he has here. I'm not gonna go into that campaign. Looks like he's got it set up already, um, but also having a product searches campaign, which is this one here. This Amazon searches campaign, that's over there, but you're not gonna be able to get any data as well because conversion tracking isn't set up. Um, it looks like for Amazon or potentially, yeah, it's not set up in there. Um, so that's the one problem there, but that's just running. I'm gonna leave that as it is. But what I would also really, really recommend, guys, is having a uh, remarketing campaign. It's super, super valuable, low-hanging fruit. You can easily make these profitable without too much effort. And that's having like a display campaign set up, so you've got banner ads showing across the display network, but also running an RLSA campaign. I've got a video on how to create these campaigns. I'll leave a link in the description to that video as well. But really, this is a campaign that, sh that shows search campaigns only if someone's already visited the website. The advantage of this campaign is that you can run the, the actual uh, search, uh, product searches campaign like Ben's got here, but only show it if someone's already visited the website. This means that people coming through from the shopping campaign or from Facebook ads or any other marketing will then go back and search for party poppers or cannons or whatever it is, and they're only gonna see this campaign, these text ads, if they've already visited the website, which means that you can potentially get cheaper clicks with shopping. They touch the website, they haven't purchased yet, so you add an exclusion for people that have purchased, and they go back to the next day to search, which is quite common, and then they see the ads, and then you only show it then. The reason you do this is because those people coming back, they're much more likely to convert if they start searching again. Um, you know, you're not, they're not cold anymore, they've seen the brand, and they're gonna click through because you know they've seen the brand, they've got some trust, and they just might need to be at home or need to be at a different location or on their desktop before they actually convert. Anyway guys, that's the overall strategy I'd recommend here for Ben. I think it's a big opportunity here. There's a lot of potential here for him to, to really grow and work on this store. I think right now there's the, the He's got the fundamentals, the core little bits of data for this Google Ads account. You know, often I'll audit accounts that have a lot more data that are already generating more sales. But I think here, it's the hardest bit, guys, at the start when you're just trying to get it off the ground. It's so hard. That's where a lot of people struggle and give up because they spend a couple hundred dollars. They don't optimize their ads. They don't really know what they're doing, but they don't improve the website and they just can't get those initial conversions to give them that feedback from the market that they've got a product that people want. So anyway, that's what I'd recommend, guys. Hope that was helpful. If this video was helpful, please give a thumbs up. You know, that tells YouTube that I'm making content that's really helpful for you guys out there. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to think, okay, what do my subscribers want? What can I really get them uh, give them so that they can try and get inside my head and see how they could scale their own accounts, improve their own store. Let me know in the comments below too. Was it a good one? You know, I haven't made a video in a, in a while, so I really appreciate you. Know, if you let me know, hey, this helped me, this didn't help me, I wish you could look at this or do this, that would be really good for me, guys. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll put the videos in the description to all the videos I mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.